and you're quiet about it, and you teach them what they're supposed to be doing instead and pay them more often for the good decisions, they will quickly stop making those mistakes because they don't work anymore. So it's not about, no, stop it, which still kind of gets attention, right? Because even negative attention, right? Saying no, gets attention. Got your attention. Got you to get off the couch and come investigate the crinkle bag that's in the kitchen. Hey, great. I'm going to go do that the next time I want your attention. No, if you're laying under your bed, if you're on your phone, that gets treats ready from the sky so often. That gets attention. You start to do that instead. Pause. Yes. So I have a question. Yeah. So when you were rewarding him for staying, for staying off, you're mm-hmm. staying off, but he was sitting, is that Correct. is yeah. that going to confuse the dog because you're rewarding him and he's sitting, but you're staying off? Um, I think I know what you're saying. I'm the question. Uh, four on the floor is my definition of off. Right. So when we see him standing or downing, I will be able to say off to that. Does it confuse them? So if you're truly teaching that sit then means butt on ground looking at me, yeah. whether it's in front, left, or right, and that's the word they associate with that, then through repetitions, they will actually know the difference. Okay. Good. You don't have to look at them. Good. Very nice. But then me go over and... And then I go back to doing what I was doing, and I ignore him to see does he do the same behavior and does he try something different. Ultimately, all that obedience is to is teaching the dog how to think and problem solve. That's actually behavior modification. Mm-hmm. You're teaching a second language. Off. Yes. Okay. This lady's weird. So sitting, standing, or downing is actually my definition of off. Okay. Going into then, like I'm starting with a couple of the easier ones too. So he's jumping, I turn, he gets nothing, no eye contact, no body contact, redirect his feet back on the floor, step back into him, does he make a better decision? If I start to dance with him, does he make a better decision or does he make a mistake? Off. He does. I'll take it. Sit and sit, that's fine. Default sit is never a problem. Okay. If all they do is sit, can't go. <laughs> But so sitting standard down, and you'll start to differentiate the cue. Does that make more sense? Like yep. you'll actually teach them what each word means. Yep. Off login versus down versus plots. Dogs can learn all three equal the same behavior. So here's the other confusion. Quiet. Yes. So quiet is very similar to off. But what changes? My off? Yes. Or, now we wouldn't be doing this at home, right? We'd be doing three to five minutes of one cue. Or my behavior of close up. Mm-hmm. You're saying hi to your father? Quiet? Yes. So, behavior, my behavior dictates is if he starts to bark later on, I should be able to say cotton. He goes, what? That's a great thing, recognition. But then, quiet. He goes, oh, sorry. It's quiet. Because he's going to be quiet. Or if he accidentally jumps on somebody, cotton, what? Off? Sorry. I don't have to pay in those situations because you made mistakes, but I really want to teach what, what the words mean first before I need them. Because ultimately, you cannot teach an emergency. You have to teach before the emergency to get the habit in the emergency. So is the goal to initially start training or using word commands and hand commands together and then eventually phase the hand I commands do. out? Uh, it depends. Like if you're on the phone. Right. Most people who call and talk to me, if the dog's in the background barking, they say, hey, sir, my dog's barking, I'll go, go back to my conversation. Okay. So I use physical cues and verbal cues so that they're trained right. for that. Um, you can fade from one or the other or just use one or the other later. Okay. I encourage people to tend to use probably some physical cues too. Okay. The dogs are picking up more behavior than they are when they are right away. Yeah. When my, I have two more colleagues and when they get really distracted or they're really yeah. excited, sit doesn't work, but if I do this, so it's a noise, and it's just for some reason, like the finger is like more like it doesn't matter what's going on. Whereas if I just say sit, they're like no. They're really so I don't know yeah. what that is, but they respond. That's probably it's probably an aversive. You know, it's like uh, it's, you know, some of the aversive type shake hand, you know, but it, it gets an attention seeker. You know, it gets attention. Um, I, it's not right or wrong. I do I do what works. You know, and then as long as it's not causing a detriment emotionally to my dog, I'm fine with it. It's where you bring in fear tactics and pain tactics that the dogs then don't trust you. And I can't work aggression. I could not go with Rosie if I was doing scare tactics with her. She'd be like, oh, I'm going to bite you. So okay. he's over there yeah. looking. Yeah. My dog, when I take her off, she grazes. Okay. She eats grass, plates, sticks. I don't know what to do. And then she brings sure. them in the house. I have half my yard in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Week three, we start leaving. That's going to be your best bet. 
keep her on leash. That's going to be your first thing. Like I wouldn't just let her, if she's doing, if your dogs are doing naughty behaviors or behaviors you don't like, you have to prevent them. As soon as they grab that stick and bring it in the house, it works. They're going to repeat it. So you have to be the one to say, I'm going to go out with you on leash and prevent you from doing that. And when you potty, then we go back in the house and we play with everything that's appropriate. Or you bring out something that's appropriate so she doesn't actually chew on sticks and everything else. By doing that, you, you want to correct her. And I'm saying you should be proactive in doing that mental shift into actually being, no, you don't get a chance to do that. That's not what I want. Do this instead. You know, bring out a stuffed Kong filled with cream cheese in her food when she's hungry and she's not getting breakfast. Chances are good she's not going to eat the twig. She's going to go for a good time. time. Does she eat out of the dish, though? Yeah. Stop feeding her from a dish. Start putting the food in something where she has to work for it. Because she won't eat wood if she's not eating food. She'll go for food. Why do they eat that stuff? I, you know? They're not typically? Is it game? Yeah. It's a game. Teething and she's a puppy. So they do what works, what makes them feel better. Even aggression, anxiety. If it makes them feel better, that's where you repeat. So he was barking, he was getting annoyed, right? He was getting a temper tantrum, he was trying to get my attention. None of this is working. <laughs> He can't do those things. That doesn't make me do what he wants to do. But then something different, or if he, you the door, if something different works, so he's trying to pull me that direction, because he also doesn't know what he's doing out here. I'm like, oh, well, never noticed before. But if I simply go over here, and I will wait for him to make a good decision, or I can help him make a good decision, good. Help him make that good decision, good job. Make a better decision, quiet, yes. Pay him for that decision, he's a toddler. He's not going to last 15 minutes of just. So I need to help him go, hey, like, even though I'm having a conversation, this is quiet. Yes, you get paid. This is quiet. Yes, you get paid. So does off make sense? Because that's one of the whole works, right? I want you for three to five minutes teaching off. So quite literally, you take all your kibble. Let's go. Good job. Off. Yes. <laughs> oh, white chicken, white brown. Off. Yes. Off. Yes. And my hand is here. I actually want him to start looking at me. Put you over eye contact inside. But, good boy. Off. Yes. And then I move my hand into this tree. Yeah, good boy. Off. Yes. So three to five minutes, as many offs as I can in every room of the house, on the couch, off the couch, off the couch, on the couch, off the couch. Now we jump on the bed. Lure them when there's four feet go back on the floor. That's off less and good. So in every scenario that you might need off in three to five minutes, you can do a lot of repetitions. Then give them a break. Give them a bone to chew on, calm to chew on, just let relax, come up on the couch, snuggle with me, no problem. Then I would say for three to five minutes. So I, I tend to train around meal times for half an hour to an hour, but I take three minutes, take a break, three minutes, take a break. So if I take that break in between, then I start to work on something else. Ready? Yeah. Like, quiet. Yes. Okay. Jackpot. Jackpot was like five foods. They all start together. Quiet. Yes. And he looks up at me, I love that. Give him a new spot. Hi. Quiet. Yes. Okay. Can anyone tell me when I move my hand? At what point in the sequence do I actually move my hand to the tree? You can wait for the next one if you want. I'm searching. After the voice. Quiet. Yes. And why is it after I say yes? What happens if I go quiet and move my hand? Move my hand. My hand. And then, where'd you pay me? The difference between how I train with the first steps and just treat training is huge, actually. Treat training is just delivering, and they're like, oh, cookie, 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 cookie. I don't want them treat focused, I want them me focused. Mm -hmm. If I teach them to be me focused, and that's how they earn their paycheck, this won't matter later on. I will stop saying yes later. And that's how I do competition, it's just my dog. But I want him thinking right now that if he hears yes, he's getting a paycheck. So even if I say yes and then he looks at my hand, totally fine. Whoa! 
Made a mistake. Good. Off. Yes. I couldn't pay for his name because he kind of turned around. Right? He's coming right back. Up there, so. It's okay. So I don't do the work for him. He does the work. I just lower the leash. Right? How many of you just lift a leg and <laughs> I just go, hey, follow my hand and look what happens. How do you walk again? I'm the lazy trainer, but I teach the dog how to work. So if I want him so off and quiet, pretty easy stuff, right? So three minutes of off, give him a break, three minutes of quiet, give him a break. Every room of the house, as many repetitions as you can, get the definition, then say the word, then say yes, and then move your hand. Be really clear about moving your hand after the yes, because otherwise you're gonna to come to class and your dog's just gonna be like, why am I not getting the train? I want them thinking, hey, I gotta look at you to get the train. So going backwards into one of the first things I think, which is eye contact. So temper tantrum, demand, right? He's not getting what he wants. Do I look at him? Not once. How many of you looked down at him when he marked? Now he wasn't looking at you, so he didn't get the reward, the attention, but now, quiet, yes. Oh, she doesn't look at me unless I'm quiet. Ugh. Dogs genetically mark, but I don't like it. So I'm going to teach quiet, and I'm going to ignore it when it does, especially if I have a leash that can't move right into the street. I can prevent things. I don't like when he jumps. So I'm going to ignore it, and I'm going to redirect it. Turn my body, you get absolutely nothing. If your paws are touching me, you get the opposite of what you want. Right? Hi! Come on back! He's like, well, you're me. So when I want to teach eye contact with his name, I actually say that stuff on me, right? But when he looks at me, I'm not gonna lure him. I'm not gonna, I feel like I'm not gonna make a kiss him with anything else. I'm simply gonna stare at him lovingly. And when he looks at me like he's doing, I go, cotton ball. Yes. And then I okay. I wait for them to make the eye contact. And some of your dogs are gonna do what I call the hit and run. They're gonna be like, you know, you know, you know. But I don't want him to learn that that's, see how I prevent? I'm like, eh, nope, it's not there, but you can't get it. Or potentially, puppy, hi! Hey, <laughs> Must be smarter than the dog. Um, good, settle, yes. You get good stuff if you make good decisions. And it doesn't have to be calculus of 10 minutes of good decisions. It can be just making it work. But I want him to learn his name means eye contact, so I actually have to wait for him to look at me or somehow get him to look at me. I can show him the food and then pull it away and see what he does. And when he looks at me, which that means nothing, right? No attention. But when he looks at me, cotton ball. Yes. Who saw him um, pocket check? Like, mm -hmm. Right? And then I do it again. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Okay. Another spot. For the three to five minutes, you teach him his name. Just in front. It's more than around, pull more away. But then, uh, okay. 
get them to pay attention to you first. You don't necessarily have to make noise. You just have to wait for them to get that light bulb long enough to stare at you. That gets a kibble, which is why like, it makes it really easy for dinner. You don't have to do calculus and stays and all that stuff. You can just simply go, a thousand pay attention to me, and then you get the rest out of the dish. You know, he can get the rest out of the dish. Go work him for a few minutes, a couple of times, and then he gets the rest out of the dish. Right? Perfect. So we have eye contact. Now, what if they're just presenting with the butt on the ground and staring at you now? Because you've taught eye contact, so that's a good thing, right? Because now they're going to be more willing to look up. <sighs> I looked down right about the same time. I just don't look down again. And then when I looked down, he was kind of at the same time. So I'm just going to... It doesn't work anymore. Right? So how much does he want to get my attention? And then yet, ugh, make a different decision. There you go. Good boy. Even going away and sniffing the ground is a good boy. That's not working. So I don't have to say yes to it if I can say good boy, because now I can get it working again. So what if they're not SIT? Take the treat. How many of you have already done the nose up equals the butt down? Who's that? Very good. Good. Now if he breaks, did I say SIT? Because my definition of SIT is butt on the ground looking at me. Sit. Yes. And that's the only way you hear sit. It's the only way you hear yes. And it's the only way you get paced. So that later on I can just say sit and he's going to know exactly what it means. Pick your definitions to your words and be clear about them to the dog. So just because they're looking at the food, that doesn't mean it's sit. My definition is you got to be looking at me. So instead of just in front, we can do it on the right. Sit. Yes. Not perfection, but progress, right? We can do it on the left. And if he breaks, he never hears it. It's not correct, so nothing bad, but nothing good. Sit. Yes. And when he does it right, he gets paid. Let them problem solve. The leash is attached. I know he can't get into trouble even in my yard or on the sidewalk or anything. This is what we are preventing things with right now. But teach them how to do the work and don't keep saying the words over and over and over again, expecting them to change them. Insanity. Do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's what we really keep saying cues that they actually don't know yet. So just teach them another language. So sit kind of makes sense in front, left, and right. For three to five minutes, you just focus on sit. Then you give them a break. Don't take a break. Don't take a break. So yeah, it's a red toy with a red leash, Julie. Marketing's fun, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. So he has a toy. He's chewing on the toy. He's grabbing the toy. And then if I bring something close, oh, they want better. Drop it. I don't know. Yes. There you go. Oh, you missed it. There you go. Ready? Did you get it? Did you get it? Oh. But get them interested in something? Trade. Don't just snatch it away. Don't just grab it from their teeth. Get something higher to kill you. <laughs> so in other words, you have to know the highest chicken value in your house. Or chicken. He doesn't see, he knows the difference. Come on, you get it? He's like, no, they're not fun. They're not fun. I don't want chicken to get But then instead of waiting for it, drop it. Yes. Why do I say drop it when he doesn't have it in his mouth? Because that's my definition. So I have to get him to literally spit out the toy before I can say drop it. Because he doesn't know what drop it means. Yet. So unless you get them to spit out the toy of their own accord, don't say drop it. Don't say leave it. Don't say let it go. Actually get them to go. And when they do that, that's drop it. Yes. Okay. But then I try to get back to play. Yeah, I'll pay you for that. But then we can play again. And if you don't let it go, then I walk away. Maybe I go in the house and they go, huh? the tug game stopped. Yeah, you don't want to trade for it. That's fine. Right now, in an emergency, I need them to spit it out. I do protection sport, so my dog has to go and bite the bad guy. It's a civilian sport for policing. But it's called, we do tracking obedience and protection. If I send my dog to what I assume is a bad guy, but then have to call her off, or if my previous dog him off, they can't bite the bad guy because sure, it was a civilian. I have to have a, what's called a clean out. They can't just go, ah, screw you, I'm going to go bite, because I really want to. They have to go, ah, okay, she said out, come back. 
That's impulse control. If they don't naturally make that decision and you pay for that decision, you do all the work. I can't do that across the football field. I can't go stop them from biting them that quick. So I want impulse control. I need a dog to control themselves. And that's all you are getting out of obedience. You're getting the dog to control themselves. Drop it. Yes. So he just associates drop it. We just stand there like we feel right now. Totally fine definition, right? Kind of looks the same as off and quiet. But through repetitions, they get to understand that that's what it means. So you can practice that. You can practice it more next week. We can practice that this week if they're going to it. So we get sit, we get eye contact, for me, we get off, we get quiet. What about come and call, right? One of the most important ones. Now, when I train by myself, I usually will have a drag line on. If it's in the house, you don't have to. But when I go outside, I do leave a leash on. I usually a drag line on. So that if I have to, I can step on it and prevent them from going into trouble. And if you have fence in your yard, practice it on it too. If I'm by myself, though, I simply take the treat and I toss it out. I get the dog in motion to me. Cat and come. Yes. And okay. So. There you go. I think we need to work with your bangs there. Boop, 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 boop. Hi! Come, come! Yes! I want to be more exciting than the squirrel. So when I say that, it's when your dog really wants to chase something, you have to be more exciting than that. Or if they want to like, bark at another dog, you have to be more exciting than that. So if he says, oh, she's so exciting, let's go! Come on, let's go! Yes! Good job! What do you think? Okay, that was fun. Come, come. Yes, good boy. You go up that way. Come, come. Yes, good boy. And for three to five minutes, it's in motion to me. That's you and me. Yes, and paycheck. Off we go again. When you have two or more people, you mm -hmm. each can have treats. Don't say C O M E first, but if they're at that second person, clap your hands, whistle, pop, pop, pop. As soon as they start to run over by you, C O M E, Y E S, paycheck, have that second person move to a new spot. And then get them in motion, C O M E, Y E S, paycheck, and you're moving to a new spot. Because now, whoa, you went to the bedroom. Wait, you're downstairs. Wait, you're upstairs. Great rainy day game. Pop it downstairs if you have them. Thank you. There's something else up there. I see it. I saw the tree bag. Perfect example of a demanding dog, right? So, in this situation, if you're at home, I keep the leash on the dog so that they can't get the opportunity to go for that treat bag and make those mistakes over and over and over again. Or if you're going to the living room, let's go. Good boy, but I can't guess you. I can't guess and pay you for those behaviors. Let's go. You want to focus over here? We got to go this way. So, if you want to go that way, you actually are going to go in the opposite direction of it. So if he wants to go that way, come on, let's go. We'll go all the way back to the back. There you go. And he can't see it anymore. So at home, if he's really wanting to be barking at something, we can go to another room, right? And then he's like, oh. All right, let's try again. All right, that's weird. So then he gets another opportunity. Does he bark or does he stay away? He's getting at the end of his threshold. Like, <laughs> okay, seriously, I'm not used to working this much. Let's go. My boy. But I just want to teach by my behavior, you can't do that. Oh, quiet. Yes. Try that. What you want it? There you go. Only if you really want it, but okay. Cranberry and liver. Yeah, I didn't think so. You thought it was something else, didn't you? Or maybe it's a toy, maybe it's something else. Opportunistic itch. Sometimes it can be like a little bit of an anxiety signal too. I know we're almost done. I need to get a different dog. Good boy. So the recall does that kind of make sense for common call? The second part of the recall though is touch. And touch, as you saw with Rosie, like I typically will start off with food. This is a lure behavior, so food's under my thumb. My hand is going to be like in a flat area, and I usually do stick it out to the side. People do this when they want to hand treats, and people do this when they want to do stay. So I typically go off to the side. Uh, as long as he's not barking at me, then I'll present. Touch! Yes! And then he gets the treat, so I lift my thumb. Same thing then for the left hand. Touch! Yes! 
and he gets the treat. Same again. Maybe a little higher. Touch. Yes. And he gets the treat. No treat, but same presentation. Touch. Yes. And the treat comes from the other hand. So treat, 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 treat. And if they're starting to kind of come willingly, they'll start to play with. Sometimes it has treats and sometimes it doesn't. I don't just go to absolutely no treats right away, but I want him thinking like, oh, sometimes it doesn't have a cookie in the hand, but I still do the same behavior. So then this time, back to the treat, touch, yes. Back to the treat, touch, yes. Over here, touch, yes, good boy, nice job. Try up here, oh, there's a piece right there. Yes, good boy, jackpot. And I say jackpot because he gets three or four pieces of treats. We're playing with time right now, so he gets few repetitions, but a nice big reward, good boy. But touch is a really simple game, and I would be practicing it so much that you barely put your hand down and then race over to bump the nose off of it. In an emergency, it's a super easy, come touch, boom, and then we can send him out to play again. Come touch, boom, we can send him out to play again. Come touch, collar, we can get you in the house. So the next one is also very similar to touch, because it's the second step of touch in my opinion, it's the collar game. So here's the lower touch, I go collar, but I don't release, yes, until I have my hand on the collar. So I had my hand on the collar, collar, yes, and then hey. So I said touch, but I didn't say yes, I went collar, yes. Kind of see a little bit of the difference? I want him thinking, if someone reaches for my collar, it's not a bad thing. Heaven forbid someone has to catch them sometimes, or if you don't, just please catch me if you can. I want them thinking, right? Over here, touch. Whoa, you dropped it. I was a bad trainer. I dropped a whole bunch of pieces. Right, touch, collar. Yes, there you go. But variable stuff. What if someone has to reach for his collar? What if you have to reach for his collar? What if you got out of his collar and you simply want to just pick him up? <laughs> you can say collar and then just scoop him up. I want him comfortable coming close and not playing catch me if you can. I also want him comfortable if somebody goes, hey buddy, how are you doing? Collar, yes. He won't necessarily always have to hear collar, but I want him comfortable with somebody reaching for his collar if they need to. How do we scoop up little dogs? By their usually scoop up, yeah, we have the hand their collar and scoop them up. So collar game is also super easy, one of the homeworks. Um, the final one I know, well, I think that was one. So off quiet collar. Touch. Um, any questions so far? Is the homework going to be in the agenda? Uh, I will email you the homework. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So in your first training mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. okay, so there's three people in the house. Okay. Okay. Probably a better idea just to stick with one person. Um, per session. So one person for three minutes does something, the next person for three minutes can do the same thing or something different. So one person, yes, you could just do one person, but if you want to encourage everybody to train, they all just start, you know, everybody else is kind of quiet for a minute. They don't look at the dog, they look at you, but then you do three minutes, you give them a play minute, three minutes of play break, and then they can do the same thing, because then you're going to build up repetitions three times as fast. Correct, right, but if you end up being the only person that trains with somebody in the house, right, so they start to react regardless yeah. of who does it eventually. That's a great question. Yeah. So my answer is no. I can hand my competition dog to you and she won't listen to you because she's trained by me. Uh -huh. It's a picture. Yeah. If you don't do the same game and the same picture, chances are good the dog won't do the same thing with them that you do. But on the flip side, the dog will listen to you because you put in the effort to train them. So they might somewhat to a certain percentage, like 33 to 40%, listen to another person. But if that person's 